You are listening to Legacy Moments, where we have authentic conversations about life, business, and so much more to bring about transformation that goes beyond change. I am your host, Dr. Patrice Berry, and I am joined by my co-host and mom, Johnny Lloyd. Together, we combine my years of psychological training and her years of business and life experience to add value to your day. Let's dive right into today's topic, because last week we talked about toxic positivity and kind of hinted that this week we will be talking about how that relates to church. And I am just, because then the room on Clubhouse, that really sparked a lot of conversation and a lot of thoughts. And I'm so excited for us to hop into it today. Patrice, I am too. Um, and like you said, we talked about it on Clubhouse and it was so engaging. You know, have you ever set up and you thought, is this relevant? You know, does it matter to other people? And the answer I'm going to say to that is yes, it does. Yes, it is relevant. And yes, it matters. I wasn't born in the church, but I was born on the doorstep. <laughs> Not really, but I feel like I was. So I've been in church uh, the majority of my life. And um, and there's a lot of things that have happened in my personal life. There's benefits of the faith walk and positivity because it's really, is not the same. And I think sometimes in church, we act like it's the same. You know how people say, well, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Lie. Then, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, somebody had a, lost a loved one and you say, well, you know, they're in a better place. Well, right now, that's not what I'm feeling. Right now, I'm feeling pain. <laughs> right now, I'm feeling uh, the emotion that is commonplace to me and should be a natural emotion. And so when people lose their jobs and all of that stuff, we do this spin on it. And I'm not saying that our hearts are not, you know, pure. And when I say that pure is relative, our heart, we're not saying it because we don't care about the person. We actually care about them. However, we don't necessarily meet them where they're at. And the thing that I see with it is that it's a way, it's spiritualizing somebody's pain. And I think there's a difference between talking with somebody and listening to them and sitting with them for a whole day, for a week, sitting with them over a period of time, and then talking about supporting them towards, you know, hey, we haven't showered in a week. Like, let's start you know, like getting them to move towards something that is healthier because I've sat with you in your pain. I've, I've acknowledged it. I had someone tell me recently that experienced a really significant loss that really one of the best things people could do is say, I'm glad I'm not in your shoes. Wow. And see, most people in church and the world, I mean, in, everybody would look at that and say, that's me. But honestly, that's what you're thinking. Most people that are in a devastating situation, when we walk away, we say, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's not me, right? Sometimes in church, let's talk about faith and feeling. There's the emotion of pain, suffering, whatever, right? The, the real emotion, even the emotion of hate and love, even the emotion of fear, all of those emotions are real, right? Then you have the emotion, and people say, then faith. Faith is deeper than an emotion because you have to have faith in. So the Bible talks about now faith is. So it's the nowness, right? And then it says the substance. Substance is something you can touch, but faith, you can't really touch it yet. And actually, faith looks like a lie. Because if it was real, if I don't need faith for this cup, it's real. I'm touching the cup for those. Who, <laughs> I'm touching the cup. So I don't need faith for things I can touch. I need faith for things I cannot touch. So then, so people take the faith part of Christianity and they throw it on, not all of us. Some people throw it on people's pain, their sadness, their, well, you shouldn't be sad. You know God. You, you should feel better than that. I know you say you have, you know, you're thinking mentally or something's wrong. You just need to pray harder. That's what I was, I mean, I was taught. We were brought to the altar in, in oil, more oil than, than, than Crisco. And then we had, of course, the laying of hands, talking into all of that. Now I'm not knocking any of that. 
what I'm saying is there is space for a person to hug me and hold me and let me cry this thing out without trying to give me three pieces of tissue to wipe my tears and, and, and suck it up and move forward because that doesn't allow me to feel like that. So there's this thing that I think is really imperative uh, for me as a Christian and for me to embrace other people right where they're at is to be with them in the moment, to be engaged with them in the moment. Now that doesn't mean I get, I'm gonna let people that I love not dress for three years and <laughs> nothing like that. That's not what it means. However, can you just be with me in the moment? Be with me in the moment and help me then step out of that uh, with the encouragement. But then, like I said, we're, part of the, what I felt is that I would go to the altar and when people start crying, I mean, I was trained. When people start crying, you grab tissue real quick, give them tissue so they can wipe their face. Well, no, some people may need to snot. They may, they may need to get on, they need to cry it out and scream it out. Now, when we when we hear that sometimes in church, we think, okay, there's a demon, there's a spirit, there's a negative thing about that. I'm saying sometimes things hurt you to the core and you need to be with your family, people that you love you in a safe place uh, so that you can actually release that. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody's whatever. What I'm saying is, is can we be with people? The problem is that sometimes if we aren't there with people, and they come to the church, which is supposed to be the hospital. It's supposed to be the place you come when you're broken. You come broken and then somebody tells you it's your fault, that you don't have enough faith, that you're not praying hard enough, that you're not doing this and you're not doing that and not send you resources. Like here are some licensed counselors that can talk with you because sometimes people's issues require a trained professional that can meet with them. Maybe they need medication. Maybe they need, and it's not my place to determine how that person's healing will come. And I feel like we do that more for emotional things or life experiences that people have. And we don't do it as much with physical ailments because nobody would get upset at somebody with diabetes for checking their blood sugar. We wouldn't get upset because they're taking their insulin. We wouldn't get upset that they're attending their regular appointments with their medical doctor to maintain, because sometimes, hey, if my blood sugar is all over the place, I might have to meet with my doctor more frequently. And we often do that and we call it gaslighting. So gaslighting is where I make you feel bad for something that I actually did. So if I slapped you in the face and then, which you're my mother and you, ooh, uh-uh, mm, mm, oh, sorry. But if I- <laughs> Never in life. <laughs> Unless she's trying to bring me back because she thought I had fell out and fainted. That ain't going to ever happen. Go and then okay. somehow I was like, well, you made me do this. You said this and you did this and it's all your fault. And if you hadn't done that, then this wouldn't have happened. That is, and then that you don't have any right to be upset for what I did to you. And that's sometimes what can happen within church. And a lot of people can leave feeling more broken than when they came in. And sitting with someone in the midst of their pain doesn't somehow lessen their relationship or either person. To me, what it does is when I'm trying to get somebody to feel better fast and to microwave their healing then that's me trying to feel better about their situation than really being there for them and giving them what they need. Because it's very uncomfortable when somebody comes to me and they're like, I've experienced a loss. I literally have to take a breath because that is heavy to hear those things. And to sit with somebody in that, there are uncomfortable feelings that come up for the listener. And that's why I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because being able to normalize that when somebody is sharing something painful with you, it will trigger some things in you and it is on you to manage you because really you're not trying to fix them. <laughs> right. Stop looking at everybody like everybody's broken, right? And, and, and then stop looking. And this is my thing. My thing is God is all powerful, all knowing, right? He's everywhere at the same time. He knows how I feel. So my thing is, is, and you can speak more to this, 
is the uh, unauthentic way. I, you know, I'm going to dress up, put makeup on over my over a person's pain. They come in and act like everything's okay, but inside they're just literally crumpled. They're just hurt. So if I can't come to the hospital and get my healing, if I can't come to the hospital and get my love, if every time I think um, or say something, people dismiss the way I feel, then I believe they're not hearing me and they dismiss me. So instead of it being healthy, a hospital that heals, it becomes a place of hurt. And people either start to think that there's something wrong with them, there's something wrong with God, or there's something wrong with those people. Oh, like oh, that is say that, again. say that again, say that again. There is yeah. something wrong with God, something wrong with them, me or as a person, or right. something wrong with the people. And more often than not, it's normally something wrong with the people. Now, sometimes we do have to work out our feelings towards God. So I remember a major loss in my own life. I did not understand. And it's really, I don't think I'll ever fully understand exactly why it happened or the true, like it, it can be difficult to grapple with a good God letting bad things happen. And we're not going to get into that. That's a whole that's other a thing. whole other conversation. Good things happen to bad, yeah, why bad things happen to good people. That's a whole nother level. And being able to think about. So I remember that poem that talked about the footsteps poem. Oh, the footstep in the sand. Oh my goodness. That's an excellent poem. Because it talks about there were two footprints and then there's only one. And then there were two again. And that God carried them for that time, but it doesn't always feel that way. I think in the Bible, there's so many people that experienced emotions. To me, David had very, very strong emotions. He was very emotional, very passionate person. There were lots of Jesus wept and he knew, he knew he had power. He knew what was going to happen next. And still there was a grief. There was an emotion that came over. Cause guess what? Uh, it was Mary and Martha, right? Right. They blamed him. For, for Lazarus. You let my brother die. And, and okay, so let's touch that for just a second. There was two things. So they believed during that time that if, if Jesus had to come in the three day period, that Lazarus spirit was still lingering and they could get him up, right? So, so the deal with that is after he came after the time is like, okay, he's dead for real now. Why are you coming? Why are you showing up? So it was emotions on both sides because Jesus cried. Lazarus was his friend. So my thing is emotions is something God gave us. There's good emotions. People want to say there's good emotions and bad emotions. And I'm learning from you. And even as I was about to say it, I'm looking at her face, y'all. And she was saying like, don't say that. Don't say there's good emotions and bad emotions. Don't. She, she looked at me like that. She said, don't you say that. I've trained you better than that. I saw it. Anyway, so this, I'm just telling you, so y'all know, she looked at me with a hard look. So, and so, but this is, this is the deal. The deal is, is that that's the way I was trained. I was trained that there's good, there's good emotions and bad emotions, right? And most of us have been trained that way. However, anytime we put good and bad on something, then in, especially in church, if we think uh, sad, Sadness is a bad emotion or whatever the bad emotion is, we have labeled bad then or fear. Is, you know what I'm saying? When we start putting labels on things, then that means that we distance ourselves from those things. We say, if you feel that way, then something is wrong with you. And then going back to what Patrice is talking about with the footprints in the sand, there are times in all of our lives that we felt so alone. Uh, we were in we were in space with other people and we felt so alone. And, and what I really hope through this is that we will give each other more space uh, and be more genuine to allow and not dismiss other people's experiences. Now, there's for me, this this, when you keep on, I'm, I'm going to wreck, I always look at people and say, okay, I'm not a psych. I, that's not the brain is not my thing. So if you continue to have this, you might want to check on something. You might want to, you know, just make sure you're okay because we love people. 
However, when you label them as the problem, it's what you're going through is not who you are. Does that, is that, is that a good, help me Patrice, tell me. No, because that makes, that makes so much sense. And I wanted to transition into, because we've said this a lot and there are people that believe that faith and fear can't occur at the same time. And for me, when we put things on opposite poles like that, where it's either all or nothing, that can create some very problematic thinking. Sometimes we talk about spiritual concepts, but then there are some practical applications. And so I think in the spirit, faith and fear, those things do not share the same space, but within my body, there might be times where I might have some faith and some fear. And, but in the spirit, because we are mind, body, and spirit. And so at times within me, it may not always be this, this or that, that within me, there might be this battle, this fight, this daily transformation, this daily thing that I do, but I'm not doing anything wrong when fear comes up because fear is a normal emotion. Fear is it's good. It would be odd if I didn't have some fears. Like I want my son to have some healthy fear of not running into the street or like to have some healthy things because if, if we don't have certain concerns, but I don't want that fear to immobilize him to never play on the sidewalk. And so I think there's a balance that we can reach. And in the church, there's not always a balance that's taught. And this isn't meant to talk down about the church. And so I wanted to give that, that caveat that I'm actually very lucky. I haven't experienced major church hurts or like any spiritual abuse or, cause there are people that have experienced significant issues, significant trauma within church settings. And so this in no way downplays any of that, but I do think that we are able to move towards a healthier space as a community where the church can be what I think it was meant to be, which is a refuge, a place where the hungry, the broken, where people, the immigrant, eh, the people that people can come and feel better and not leave feeling worse. And that in part of that feeling better, it might be studying with people and hearing them because I remember when people used to come up to the altar it was like oh you're super duper spiritual if you just see them and you're like your your connection is so good with God that you just know exactly what to pray for and because I had worked the altar a few times and so what I did was I would ask so what would you like for me to pray for (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was like a basic so what would you like for me to pray for and uh you mentioned the thing about the crying and with that, and I hope that people can keep track with us because we pop, we hop all over the place. We are hopping all the way back, follow it, follow it. <laughs> however long ago, but with tears, there are three different types of, of tears. I heard an amazing explanation of this on TikTok. So there is a reactive tear and that's to get debris out of your eyes. There is a type of tear that helps just a continuous tear that just helps lubricate our eyes throughout the day. And then there are these tears that we cry that are emotional and they have looked. So the the other two types of tears, the ones that get debris out the eye, the ones that um, help keep your eyes moisturized throughout the day, those are water, those are H2O. Those other tears, those emotional tears, they actually have stress hormones in them. Like we're literally crying out toxins and we are, and it releases dopamine in our brain because our, it lets our brain react. So, and comfort ourselves because sometimes you just need a really good cry. And so that's why within therapy, I was trained that when somebody's crying to not give them a tissue, because sometimes giving them a tissue kind of means stop. Like, eh, like you're crying. Here you go. Please let me stop. fix it. Let me fix, let me fix it. it. Like this. Yeah. I, love I, I love that. I love that. I, you know, it's interesting. And and so we're talking about this. We have the God kind of faith. We have. We were created by God. That's what our belief system is, right? And so, what kind of creator would let you cry like that? 
and then get all of this toxin out of you. Isn't that, I just think that's amazing. So out, and I'm gonna tap back into one other thing. You said fear and faith, right? You talked about that. And so in the Bible, it says, I believe, but help my unbelief. So even in the middle of my faith, there's something human in me that feels like, So Lord, help my unbelief, help me believe at a different level, help me really tap into who you are and whose you are. Let me tap into this space of of your omni present, omni, you know, powerful and all that. So let me tap into that. And, and, And the thing about that is, is that I'm able to tap into it when I come just as I am. Because remember, we're, we're the light right? We're the city on the hill that cannot be hit. We're, we're salt and light. Salt is used to preserve. Salt is used to season. Salt is used to do those things, right? We can't lose that. So I, again, we're not knocking ministry because Lord knows I, I love him more than I love life. And I know you do too, because I know your mama. So anyway, so <laughs> the deal with that is, is that we believe that this opportunity for us everybody is to look at it a little bit more closely and so not for us to be uh, I don't want to call it offended or let's call it fearful or like I can't fix you or I want to stop your pain I'm not and I'm not telling us as an individual to pick up their pain that's not for us to pick it up right however for me to hold you while you cry and for me to do what I know to do to comfort you. And it doesn't mean that I get a chance to say, well, you know, they're in a better place. Yeah, but that's not gonna help the woman who just lost her husband. She's been married to him for whatever number of years or a child or whatever. That's not gonna help that right now. They, that's not what they need to hear. They just need to know that you, we love them. We are the uh, ambassadors for God. We are the ones that he uses our arms and our words and our love for other people. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, Patrice, if I, we could talk about this just for a moment, is that the, the critical piece that I saw when we were thinking about this is there is a, a thing that when a person cannot have feelings, there's, it's, it's a, there's a disease. And I don't know what it is, but I know it's true. <laughs> there's a disease. And, and the, the reason I'm bringing this up is this. The power of feeling is so needed that that the lack of it can cause us to lose our life. When this, when a person cannot feel, when they've been cut, when they've been hurt, that kind of stuff, when they become numb, when we become numb to our own emotions, when we become numb to our feelings and how we feel and we discount us, then we can become numb to life and the things that could impact us, the things that we could feel, we then don't give it any room. So I just want us to be careful in that space. So I know you have something. I see your face. Go ahead. I love that because spirituality used to be a major protective factor against being unalive, against people harming themselves on purpose. And it's not anymore. There are pastors. There are lots of different people that have done things that they can never take back. And many of them were in therapy. They were in treatment and things just got to a place where they just couldn't bear it. And that's where I really appreciate that the pastor for the church where my husband and I go, that he took a sabbatical, that he takes time. He's in his own therapy. He's serious about his own mental health and the mental health of other people. And also that we can be real and we can be authentic and we truly can come as we are. And if you really are needing help, that you can come. And that help, because we don't know, because when you come for help, you don't always know exactly what you're going to get but trying to give people what they need. I like that you put some examples of toxic positivity when we were kind of thinking about today, like too blessed to be stressed, blessed and highly favored. And 
feeling like you have to be constantly happy and and not normalizing that people get mad at God. I remember growing up, first of all, people, you know, having anger really wasn't a child expressing anger wasn't a thing. And then being mad at God that that was viewed negatively, despite Job having questions of God, and then God asked him a whole bunch of questions and Where were <laughs> you? him in his place. <laughs> Before I answer your questions, how about you answer all of mine? And that didn't, that didn't go over the way, but Job hadn't done anything wrong because that's what everybody in his life were like, what did you do? What happened? And he didn't do anything wrong. And so I think we also have to have a deeper spirituality that God isn't this fairy godmother that I just pray to when I want a bigger house or a bigger car or new clothes or a husband or a child. And then I magically get everything that I ask for because and that nothing bad ever happens. And because we live in a world where, with free will. We live in a world where, where things happen. People have choice. And I have seen years later. So in the midst of somebody's struggle, we did not understand what, what was going on. And for some people years later, we're able to look and see, wow. And that person starts their nonprofit to advocate for this, for this issue or this pain, they are able to find some purpose in it, which is so important, but they first have to feel the pain because I say it and I'm, and I mean it as a therapist, when I'm sitting across from somebody and they are sharing some of the most painful, the most hurtful, the deepest, darkest parts of their life, I feel a piece of that with them. But because of boundaries, I don't take it on. I don't take it home. That took a lot of work, but I feel that. And that I will quit this job if I can ever hear somebody in pain and not feel something. To me, feelings kind of prove, oh, I'm alive. I'm still here. I want to be able to feel. And sometimes we do. So sometimes that numbness, numbness for a short period of time can sometimes give relief if somebody has a whole bunch of pain. So I remember going through childbirth and I had been in pain for three days before I went into active labor. And by the time I got to that hospital, cause I was like, Ooh, I'm gonna do natural gas. I'm not, I'm not going to get, mm -mm. as soon as I got to the hospital, give me that epidural. I need, I need that good stuff. And I was, I was feeling good. And I was, and that pain was numbed completely. And then I slowly start to got, get some feeling back, which was good. And then, you know, feeling fully, fully restored. And, um, but sometimes it can be helpful to get a break from pain in healthy ways and mm -hmm. just trying to avoid unhealthy ways. Uh, for this episode, I'm likely going to put some resources on YouTube and then also make sure that there are resources linked on my Instagram. And so you can click right on the anchor website if you are, cause something within this episode might've triggered something and you might need some resources. And so within my bio, I have a resource where you can find a therapist. There are questions that you can ask a therapist. There are also some resources for crisis numbers because sometimes we just need somebody to talk to in the midst of a moment. And there are some national hotlines that are available. Yeah, there's a lot in this. Um, just like we check on our car, even if you think your whole life is perfect, even though, you know, like I just came back from a long trip and um, pretty soon my, my check engine light is gonna come on. When that light comes on, I go get my car fixed. Now that light is only an indicator. It doesn't stop me from driving my car, right? So there are certain things in our lives that should be indicators that we may need some additional support. And what I encourage all of us to do is to get that support when we need it. And or even when you think you need it. And, and that's the key. The key is, is health is from the inside out. And it starts with our mind. So don't delay getting the services that you need. Because this is not what we're doing. We're not providing you services. This is not what we're doing. We just, we're giving you information. We're having a, a conversation. We're being very authentic. And, and just know this. We care about you. We care about you. And, and that's the one thing that both of us have is that we really love people. It's very important that you know that. 
Um, and so if this has triggered anything, if this has brought up anything, don't be playing with it. Go get help. Do you have any final thoughts, any things that you wanted to share? And I think we will talk about helping somebody that's grieving. That might be an entire episode. And if the listeners, if you all have any ideas, you can message us and you can message <laughs> me. You can message Patrice. <laughs> Don't message me. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Message Patrice. She'll tell me what you want. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the last thing I think is really important is um, give other people a break. They may not have heard this, right? And share it with other people, not to fix anybody, just to help people be more informed. And, and what I would, the last thing I would say is that um, don't ever assume that, you know, just the word assume by itself is, is, is a word that you can spell out for yourself. So anyway, don't ever assume that by me trusting God, I shouldn't feel emotions. I shouldn't feel anger. I shouldn't feel uh, hopelessness. I shouldn't feel any of those things because if I feel any of those things, I don't trust God. Even Jesus went to the cross and before he went to the cross in the garden of Gethsemane, he asked that this cup, is there another way? He asked for that. So he was going through this season and then he came out and said, can't you pray with me for just one hour? Now he didn't say that with like, hey guys, you know, if y'all don't mind, he didn't do that. He, he didn't mad. do that. He was mad. So, but, but it's, it's those emotions, but control them. Don't, don't hurt other people in your middle of your emotions. Don't say things that would harm other people. Just be, know that emotions is something that you can um garner better control, self-control on. So th I would, that would be my last statement is, is don't be so positive that you, you're not, um, that you can't even be with yourself in the moment. The way I hear it too is don't be trying to reach this ideal or this perfectionism or this unreachable, unattainable, because that always make you more sad. Once I acknowledge, once I let myself feel, I typically recover from the emotion a lot faster than if I fight it. Than if I keep brushing it under the rug, brushing it under, and then I trip really hard. And now I freak out on somebody over something small, but I'm not, I'm, I'm giving them a year of reaction of things that have built up over time or six months or three days. And so being able to feel things as they come, that can actually be quite healthy. And there are people that have, you know, they're working with a therapist, they're working. And so you get the specific recommendations you need, but we just would like to thank you all for listening. And if you enjoy our conversations, if y'all think we're fun here, ooh, you should see us on Clubhouse. We have a good old time. We have a club called Legacy Moments. You can search for that club or you can follow Dr. Patrice Berry or Johnny Lloyd. And our club is linked right there. We host rooms depending on our schedule. We also wanna make sure that you subscribe to this podcast so you can be notified of future sessions. You can connect with us on social media and we truly hope you have a good day.